Our gospel lesson today is from Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 14. Listen for God's word that is for us in this day. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that, widow, in that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Jesus also told this parable of some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, and even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven. It was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled and all who humble themselves will be exalted. This is the word of the Lord. I wonder if you've had this same experience. I found that nothing silences a room in a church like the question, who would like to pray for us today? <laughs> I rarely ask this anymore, but when I'm in the room and the question is asked, I know there's a 90% chance that I as the pastor will end up being the one praying. You could call it a professional hazard, yet it's also an honor to pray on another's behalf and to pray for those gathered. However, on those occasions when another does say yes and offers a prayer, I will tell you that it is a great gift and a true blessing to me as well as to all the others. Now, perhaps it's because I expect to be asked to pray, and I find it so meaningful, that this question can create awkward silence seems a bit funny to me. Yet on the other hand, it really is quite understandable. I've also found that prayer asks, and most of the time requires, one to reveal at least a piece of their heart. Prayer is where we encounter God, and prayer is also where we encounter the deepest parts of ourself. It does take a bit of space. It does take, perhaps, a bit of warning it is hard to just fall into that so quickly. Now today, these scriptures we have read give us four examples of how prayer affects the lives of these people who are praying. The first one we have is Samuel. I love this story. Samuel didn't even realize he was having a conversation with God. And yet this conversation and this prayer came to him and it called him awake. And Samuel had to figure out who it was that he was talking to. 
To do so, he followed the advice of his teacher. And once he understood he was being called, being invited into this conversation, he responded only by taking the next step. This was a prayer God was leading, and so he said, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And he did. The rest of the chapter, he didn't interrupt. He didn't race through this list of wishes and desires. He listened, and he received God's words. This prayer was a beginning for him. It shaped the rest of his life as he became a prophet for God, one who listened and followed and shared all that God said. Mother Teresa said, God speaks in the silence of the heart. Listening is the beginning of prayer. What might we hear if we dared to listen? Second, Jesus tells us a parable about a widow. And she went seeking justice. There's so much justice to be sought in this world. And she has to go to seek justice from one who's way more concerned about power and way more focused on doing what is good for him than for anyone else. As I read this, it seems like he's this brick wall between this woman and justice, and yet she went day after day, long after one would reasonably have hope. But she kept going and asking each and every day for justice. This is a story I find most helpful for those prayers that seem to go unanswered or that we never seem to understand or know the answer. For in this example, Jesus starts by telling us not to give up. We're encouraged to work and pray even when it may feel impossible. And above all, Jesus says, do not lose heart. Keep praying. Max Licato wrote, our prayers may be awkward. Our attempts may be feeble. But since the power of prayer is in the one who hears it, and not in the one who says it, our prayers do make a difference. And so today, consider, is there something in your heart that you need to pick back up and keep praying? The third person we come to is a Pharisee. And in this parable, Jesus says how he's going up to the temple to pray, and he claims to be thanking God. But if you remember, it really feels more like self-congratulation. It's like, thank you, Lord, that I am so much better than this tax collector. Wow. This Pharisee had all the fancy words, but he was missing the truth. He couldn't see himself clearly. And he could only see God through this understanding that he himself had created as he lifted himself up. Now his prayers sounded great, but they were missing the depth and the impact and the power to shape and change him. Because he didn't honestly come to God with an open heart to see and to hear Yes, even being willing to change. I think this part of the scripture is great for those who are saying, I don't think I have the right words. Are my words good enough? Do they sound good enough? It's never about that. It's first about your heart. Prayer must have room for the divine to enter in. If we are so full of ourselves, How can we be full of God? So last we come to the tax collector. This is the same one that the Pharisee was so happy 
not to be. Yet there in the temple with his head looking down at the ground, he prayed, Oh God, have mercy on me. He prayed with honesty. In this, we don't hear any excuses. We don't hear any rationalization. There wasn't an overabundance of words. There was just the need to come as he was to God. In this honest, vulnerable, humble prayer, he's not really even asking God to fix his life or to make it easier, but to have mercy that God might forgive and give him a way and a chance to begin again. We have a God who reaches down to lift up the most humble. This is an attitude of prayer that can be held by even the most powerful of men. I found this quote from Abraham Lincoln who said, I have been driven many times upon my knees by the overwhelming conviction that I had nowhere else to go. My own wisdom and that of all about me seemed insufficient for that day. What does the Lord require of us but to seek justice and to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God? This summer we're going through different topics as we consider how God shapes us. I think prayer is one of the most powerful tools. Soren Kierkegaard wrote that prayer doesn't change God, but it changes the one who prays. May we also be changed, shaped by our prayers and our, in our interactions with God. For prayer does require a piece of our hearts that we would honestly open them, that we would honestly connect to God and see where it is God would lead. It's not always just about what we want. And that is a very good thing. Today is a day not only to reflect on prayer, but to pray. To pray maybe in different ways. And so we've created space in this service for you to pray. As we are together, I invite you to welcome in the silence, to move and to go to different places, to find a way to truly open your heart, to pour it out to God, to meet God there. And so as we come to receive the gifts of God, of the bread and the cup, we are also invited into prayer. And so today as we prepare for communion, we also prepare our hearts. You can go first to a prayer station, you can go first to communion. Let the Spirit lead you. If you spend the whole time in one place, that's all right. If you go to all of them, that's all right. If you need to stay in your seat and pray, that is all right as long as you are honestly saying, here I am. How do I meet you today, O oh Lord? How can I not be concerned about what my words are, but to offer the prayers of my heart? Let us not lose heart. May our prayers draw us near to God and to God's own heart. Amen.